it is funny. Um, just a second ago, I got a notification uh, in Dutch that the um, <laughs> that that the, that the conversation will be recorded. But it is funny that I got the notification in Dutch. Oh really? <laughs> well. I think in two more minutes we'll begin. Okay. Welcome, Ma. Good evening. Okay, two minutes over, so I think we can. We can start now. Good evening, everyone. Um, you're welcome to this um, special event on raising young God seekers, laying the um, foundation for your children's, for our children's <laughs> spiritual growth. And before we go into what we have for today, um, I would just want us to pray. But before we pray as well, please confirm you can hear me very well, like loud and clear. Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, once again. So um, I'm just going to take a moment. I don't know if anybody can just volunteer, volunteer yourself to just say a word of prayer, a short word of prayer, please. Anyone who is not shy, <laughs> of course, I know that we've all received the spirit of boldness. Nobody's shy yet. Anyone? Okay, I just assume that we are all like yeah. very busy. Sh shall I do? Shall I do? Please go, Justin. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, dear Father in heaven, I thank you uh, for this evening where we can come together and we where we can hear things about parenting. And well, not all of us may be parents, but maybe we are uh, taking spiritual care uh, about children. Uh, in general, and I hope that you will inspire us with the information that we will get this evening. In amen. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Justin. Thank you very much. I want to welcome us once again to this um, special event. My name is Messi Adiso, who has a way of in introduction, and um, I am first the child of God. I'm a wife. I am a mom. I'm a friend and sister to you know, my friends and family. And um, it's such a joy and a privilege to um, to do this. Um, I The starting point of this might have been, you know, when I started interacting more with children in hospitals via YouTube channel as well, you know, sharing um, God's word and scriptures, scriptures values with children, you know, through music. And I, I believe that it's just been a channel, channel rather, to be a blessing unto lives, 
beyond what I can even fathom, you know, in my mind. And I just want to thank God for that. I want to thank um, everyone for joining once again. And um, without further ado, because I know that time is of great essence, um, we'll just jump into what we have um, for today. Okay, so we're going to be talking about um, raising young God seekers, laying the foundation for our children's spiritual growth. And um, my anchor text will be taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 80. And then please permit me, I don't know if there's anybody who can read it or you can put it in the chat, uh, it would be great. Um, I find that scripture very powerful. At the anchor of whatever we'll be doing here is the word of God because that's what is sustainable. That's what is able to birth the transformation that we desire in the lives of our children. So I just want us to turn our Bibles to like Luke 1, verse 80. Luke 1, 80. Luke 1, 80. I'll try to, you know, be as quick as possible in, in the reading and then and, um, conversing as well. Luke 1, verse 80. A.C. Okay, the Bible says that the child grew and developed in body and spirit. And I feel like that was where, you know, God got my attention that um, he wasn't just growing in body, but he was growing in spirit. So it's not enough as parents that we're doing everything to make sure that our children feed well, like they eat physically, they do, you know, the assignments, they are growing mentally, you know, having the best kind of sports. I mind you, it's not bad, it's really good. I'm, I'm big on, you know, having extracurricular activities, at least, you know, as, as children grow and all. So it's not enough for them to just grow in their body. It's God's desire that they grow strong in spirit. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, I love the way, I think it's King James or NKJV that put it. This is a waxed strong in spirit. So it wasn't just growing in body, it was waxing strong in spirit. Letting us know that it is God's desire that our children are not just, you know, marking time, growing in body, and they're like, oh, they're so smart. But it feels like, you know, on the level of relating with God, conversing with God, it feels like a zero. That's not God's desire for our children praise god so i want to say first and foremost congratulations that god chose you to you to nurture to nurture he, his child in your care because the bible says that children are god's heritage so god chose us as parents or parents to be you know god has already marked children for us or before the foundation of the world so you know um or whether it's even spiritual parents you might not be a parent yet or something you know, spiritual parenting, God has ex among children that, you know, we would be blessing to. So God chose us to tend and nurture um, children in his way, not just any way, but in the way of the Lord. And, you know, at first, well, just speaking from the fact that there was a time that um, I, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I was, as a new mom, I was just, you know, filled with awe, like this, a, a human being came out of my body, like my womb. I, I, it was so much awe and everything. And then, you know, just growing you know, daily, I just realized how much, you know, parenting can be very enormous. You know, you realize that you're responsible for a whole human being, whether it is one or two children or three children, they are all special to God and they matter to God. So it feels super amazing, you know, to be that and all. And then you now realize the enormity of the task and you're like, God, I need so much help and grace. And that's what we're just going to be talking about today because you're in good company. I, 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 it's a community like this that I always pray for every point every opportunity to just jump in and then just learn about how to do it better in parenting you know gives me so much um joy and gladness so we're just going to walk through how we can help our children you know to grow spiritually with very practical steps and the first thing i feel like the holy spirit laid upon my heart is to do it now i know that we have heard it several times do it children love you know when you model it to them it's so powerful yes in as much as we've heard it sometimes we might not realize how in-depth that is because on good and bad days you must be doing it praise god so do it it says don't just say it and i want us to open to look up acts chapter one verse one Acts chapter one verse one. I just don't just want to say things without you know having it backed up in scripture. So we realize that it's not me talking; it's God. You know that's that work. God is talking. Hallelujah. 
Acts chapter 1 verse 1. If anybody finds it, you know, quickly, we could just put it on the chat. Um, I think it was where um, the Bible says, um, O Theophilus, I write to you about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. So we are not just saying it, but we must be parents that do it, that model it. Um, you know, what, what God really wants of us is that, you know, when I was just meditating on it, is that it's so transformative just doing it before your children because they now begin to realize that okay mommy and daddy are not just saying um do it they are they are, they are walking the talk like people say like they walk the talk now you know one of the things that you know just settled in my spirit when um uh, when when i was meditating on it was that how do you do it now the the example that the holy spirit gave to me was that there are days that you know i don't know if it, well, I think it happens to every one of us, you know, as believers on our journey of faith. It's not every time that you are in the mood to, in quotes, seek God. You're not happy. You're not having that type, that jump to just say, Lord, I, today I just feel your awesome presence. We may never feel that gish gish, but we turn up. So what about days that, you know, maybe we have the house rent to pay or, and there's no money and maybe there's no food enough on the table. Those are the days that God expects us as parents to truly do it. We don't just do it by doing it on the days that we feel very good about it. We do it in and out of every season. Praise God. Please just a thumbs up if you if you're following and if 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 you know, I don't want to use the word it's making sense, but actually, if it's making spiritual sense, please feel free to do some thumbs up. So we're not just thank you so much so we're not just saying that just do it it must be in and out of every season that we are saying children um this is how i'm you're not even not even saying it sorry i just mixed my thoughts you know just doing and say okay lord i seek you daily with all authenticity there is no i believe that our christian work is not is something that cannot be faked if it's there it's there if it's not there <laughs> it's no it's not there like in code and everything so god wants us as his children you know to do it i think um i say why he's raising his hand okay I, maybe that was an error i know so even when it feels gloomy and it's difficult to seek god what god expects of us you know as parents is to still model it by doing it what this does is that it imprints a memory in their mind that you know when they run into challenges they remember that there was a time that mommy was going through this or daddy was going through this and yet they still showed up in the presence of god i'll give an example i i think growing up i had we had you know so many of those examples and then when they were obvious problems when i mean obvious problems one of those times was when i think my dad was arrested or something it was a very very hard season and even in at school when i got to know about it i i felt really really bad and oh but my mom was saying you know just encouraging us why we should see god you know just saying the word of god over us and you, you know it just felt refreshing so when i run into problems now my first resort is not to say okay god it's time to jack back from your presence it is to sit with god and that's what we must model you know to our children especially in a day and age like this where everybody's all about soft life when it's not good I beg God, just stay your own day, your own day. God wants us to do it, model it before our children. Praise God. And the truth is that it will inform their choices as they grow older. Another way to just to do it is actually to have consistent family altars, consistent family devotion. And I know that sometimes this might feel like this is a cake. Uh, you know, it's our parents that did it, but I say dare to say that is so powerful because you are showing them how it is done. That family is God's idea. Family um, is supposed to be strengthened in strengthened in prayer. How or in the word and in the word as well. How do we get strengthened? Is by staying together, coming to seek the face of God as a family, consistently having family altars. And I'm not saying that you should now you should. You must have like maybe five hours. I think that was, I okay. Just fun fact. I growing up, I, I honestly dreaded family devotion, to be honest, because my mommy is still Jesus comes in quotes. We can be there more than five hours, and we are praying. You will sleep off. My mom come and slap you. 
<laughs> and all and all of that but you must wake up to it you must pray i know so i'm not saying that you know the five hours of course everybody has work and everything you have to go to work <laughs> and oh but um at the time actually it was not because she didn't have work the day she doesn't go to work <laughs> oh my god <laughs> lord have mercy i started thinking night before five hours so today <laughs> i know sorry for my people that don't understand yoruba and oh <laughs> I know. So <laughs> what God really wants of us is to just consistently do it. Even if it's 30 minutes, one hour, depending on your job, or if you have to do it at night or in the morning, just make sure that you are consistently showing up because you are modeling something to your children that this thing that we are doing, it's a thing for generations. Praise God. So it, it becomes also the foundation of their spiritual good because you begin to ask about their perception. What do they think about this subject? You know, you a particular verse of the scripture you are reading it, and then you say, "Okay, ah, um, Timila, they share with me what God is saying to us here." You are you are even building leadership skills in them. They are bold enough to share their mind without being ashamed that anybody's going to talk them down and say, "Ah, you're saying nonsense," or "What you say does not make sense," and everything. They are bold to make all of the mistakes and know that when I even when I make the mistakes, I can be corrected. So. We must model that by, you know, doing it rather by having consistent um, family order. Ask them also to also lead. You can also ask them. If, that's if they are grown up, maybe five, four, five. Those that are can can already lead three, four, five, and all. You know, lead us in prayer. Lead us in lead us in worship. Let me hear from you. You know or lead us in two choruses and all. That's how you're just helping them to realize that the work we have with God is a contributory kind of work. You contribute to the body. You, you're not just sitting or relaxed and everything. You, you participate. It's not a passive thing. It's an active participation, praise God. So that's what, that's, you know, like um, one way to, um, to just, um, do to just do it and all and then you know sometimes children might really really have very funny thought perspective about things but there yeah, and then if you've been having constant conversations as you have family altar you realize that they begin to tell you their mind the things that they have at the core of their mind that if you you didn't expect that they will have such thoughts the holy spirit just makes them speak about it and you can address the matter you know by the help of the spirit of god maybe they are saying that ah i heard somebody in my school maybe you were talking about maybe something about um a, a scripture in the bible that says same sex i think it's a book of romance that it's not it's not of god i know book of romance chapter one or two i can't remember the exact scripture one of the things that you will now do because you have heard them talk about it is to educate them based on the word. It might have been that somebody has, has sold a lie to them. That is how you uncover the lie and put in the truth of God's word. Praise the Lord. So doing it by having consistent family altar. Yet another way to do it is to take them to church. Don't leave them at home, please. Don't leave them at home. That's how you grow their spiritual work with God. And when I'm saying take them to church, if you can go for midweek services, it's good. So they don't imbibe the attitude that it's only Sunday or Sunday is for the Lord. Every other day, you know, <laughs> let's be chilling, you know, at home or maybe let's just go and have fun and everything. Make them see that, you know, it's it, the church is God's is God's it's God is God's body. The church is important to God, and they are part of God's body. So taking them to church, you know, as I, I know that some of us are in parts of the world where, by you know, you might not readily assess, you know, um, maybe church in quotes, but their communities actually, their communities that we can be part of, where we can, you know, like share together the word of God and everything you know just going to church and everything and serving in the vineyard of god don't be a parent that warms the bench don't be a parent that warms the bench whether you are sweeping the floor of the house of god or you're serving as an usher or you're serving as a choir you are modeling something to your child that they will never forget that the service service in the vineyard of god is very powerful praise god the Bible makes mention of Zechariah and Elizabeth, that they served God, that they were blameless. That's in the book of Luke chapter 1. The, these people were devout to God. No little wonder that John took after that. There was no way, because I'm sure that they didn't really live so long like that. Because since they were old, when they gave birth, 
and all. But John followed that way by serving the Lord, doing what God had called him to do in his generation. One of the ways we can, you know, strengthen the spiritual growth of our children is to make sure that they attend church. This and they are not just attending church and one event. Is that you also, as a parent, rather you are also serving God, such that they can see you, you know, serving God. Praise God. I think that it was um, this picture that made it round on a, on the internet of Pastor Nifemi Olawande, where she you know she was just worshiping and her children, you know, just laid prostrate before God. That's how powerful doing it is. I'm sure that it was not just that day that they had been doing it. It must have been private times that she has been doing it, and they are they are taking note of it. Praise God. So God wants us, you know, to to do it um, this way. Praise the Lord um please if you're following just like a thumbs up or something if it's if it's entering <laughs> or you're being blessed <laughs> praise god please feel free to drop your questions in the chat if there are any questions that you have you know along the way maybe something that i'm saying that needs clarification or maybe i said something that you didn't quite agree with please feel free to drop in the chat praise god so aside doing it the powerful thing is teaching it as well, doing and teaching. So don't say, because I am doing it, I don't need to teach it. No. The Bible says in that same Acts verse 1, chapter 1 verse 1, it says, I write to you, Theophilus, of the former treatise, how Jesus began to do and to teach. And we could see it vividly in Jesus' life. Jesus was both doing and he was teaching. He didn't stop by the fact that oh, my disciples are saying what I am doing. So I don't have to teach it. So take, for example, Jesus has been telling them about the fact that he's the way, you know, telling himself, telling them about his father and everything. And then Thomas, or was it Thomas? I think it was Thomas that began to ask again Jesus and said, wait, who is the way? Where is the way that we are going to? And then Jesus was like, have you not been with me so long that you do not know that I am the way, the truth, and the life? He had been teaching it to them yet, you know, and then he had been modeling it yet. It still, it still seemed like he hadn't picked it. So there's something that they call the power of repetition, especially in leadership. You repeat, keep on repeating it. It's not, it's not, um, it's not like that anymore. When it comes to children, you would have to say it a thousand and one times. You know, sometimes I, I just finished shouting. By the way, I think I, for this body good, I said, I told myself I would never yell at my children. <laughs> but look at the number one person who is yelling. <laughs> once, once in a while, when I'm tired, and I've already maxed out, I begin, to, I begin to shout and I'm like, Jesus Christ, what's this? I want to do parenting well. <laughs> I know. so. Sometimes I said, don't do this, don't touch this, because this and that, but she'll be back there again, that same place, the same spots, she'll be back and everything. So it's the reason why children, you would have to teach and teach again. Don't say because you've taught once, you now stop, or I don't really feel like, you know, um, teaching again. I don't, I'm not sure that they are really grasping it. And I think that this happens to parents a lot, that you've been doing it something consistently, but it feels like, like they are not grasping it because they are not fruits showing in court yet and then you feel like maybe there's no need to continue no don't stop keep doing it keep doing it that thing the sure reward the sure recompense for the things that we do in god you know that you know that are pleasing to, that is pleasing to god hallelujah so keep teaching it today one day maybe they're in the middle of a problem or not even a problem they will hear your voice i don't know if you ever put anyone when you were growing up you're about to do something that is really really bad but you begin to hear your parents voice I don't know, please, anyone, let me be sure that I'm not alone. Anyone? Thank you, sir. You ever happened to any other person? You begin to hear your parents' voice because the first, in fact, many a times, some, some of them might not even hear the Holy Spirit directly as they grow in God. It might start from being your voice, maybe the voice of rebuke or caution or correction or well done or just you know hailing them and everything they begin to hear so it's the more reason why we should not you know stop i know okay so let me not um make this um so long so we must do and we must teach they must go hand in hand so um okay so i remember that i, I think it was um some uh, it would have been some weeks ago maybe i think it's very recent actually 
you know, weeks, weeks like that. And, you know, I, I, I was, I, I was just trying to prep, you know, my daughter for school. And then I was just, you know, packing up and everything. And, you know, like praying I, as well, like I would, like, that's what I do. Like every morning pray while I'm praying and, you know, I'm um, reading the word, you know, I've just in and out of kitchen and everything to prep her for school. And then I, you know, that morning I just saw her, she just walked in very, very early to the parlor and then she's going through her Bible story. And then the Holy Spirit just brought a particular scripture to my heart for this meeting. And then it was the picture of, of the eunuch that Philip met, you know, the Bible says that Philip said to him, understandest that which thou readest in King James Version. <laughs> so that was the way it came to me. And until Philip taught the eunuch, even though I had been reading Isaiah, he did not still understand how much more children who did not get saved from their womb. We need to keep teaching them. Do we do and we teach the word. Praise the Lord. Please, if you're following me, just, just hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Glory to God. Um, so um, let's just, you know, continue further as um, as God um, helped us, helps us rather. Teaching is vital. We must teach our children to do it. We start first. How do we teach them to do it? We start first by praying for their hearts. The Holy Spirit um, was kind of a rebuke that came, I think it was last Sunday. You know, I, 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 I was, I, I'm used to something because I grew up with that. Anytime, you know, I'm pre prepping her for school and then I'm, well, probably like in the car, I'm just praying over and everything, going to school. And then the Holy Spirit just accosted me and said, you don't always pray for her when she's going to church, saying that the revelation of God will be opened up unto her. She would, as they teach her in children's section, she begins to see Jesus. And I realized that's true. And then Sunday was the day I made like my repentance and I said, no. We need to start doing it better. So if I would pray for her going to school, I need to begin to pray that she'll begin to encounter God as she listens to the word of God, you know, in class and everything. So the first thing that we want to do when we are teaching our children to do it is to start praying that their hearts would encounter God. Their hearts would, they would encounter God. See, one of the things that we must just say to is that you cannot be the one, you can't force the revelation of God on them, in quotes. You can do your best commanding that your household after you know him and after the lord but you must realize that it is the work of the holy spirit he's the one that convicts the hearts of of we as children of god he wants to how do i say he wants to brood on them and one of the things we must do is to give him permission by praying 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 feels like we wet the ground we just pray. That's how we teach them how to do. Mentioning them in prayer. When you can wake up in the night to lay your hands upon them, do it, please. Because it's very, very powerful. That way is gathering. The rains are, the clouds are gathering. And one day the rain will fall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when I mean praying, to be honest with you, I think that sometimes people feel like until they have spent like five hours. But please, if you can spend five hours, it's very good. The days you can spend five hours, please, very good. But the little, little prayers, I think that one of the things that I have learned from mothers in the older generation is that every point is a time of prayer for them. It's spontaneous. You just hear them. You just hear them just, you know, just have an outburst of prayer. Sorry for everybody that. Is anybody that is not Yoruba? Okay, just say, ah, I remember my child. Sorry, let me say it in English. That is in so, 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 please. God, please keep, you know, please keep them. Do, do this, you know, Lord, and everything. Making it a spontaneous thing. And especially, like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Especially when they frustrate you in court, like they get you angry. The first thing that should come out of your mouth is prayer for them. It's very powerful. God will help you. In the name of Jesus, I like, you know, consciously just releasing a word of prayer because if you're not careful you will say things that you should not say you know about them and you put something that is not written ab in, about them in uh, uh, in the volume of books you you intentionally just raise a vo word of prayer just say a word of prayer no matter how short you know it is so prayer is very powerful so the other thing i also want to talk about when teaching them is to get them age appropriate bibles the age appropriate bibles you know very lovely ones for toddlers you know colorful ones Excuse me, that they can read 
not read yet, but can be fascinated by the colors and you're just reading it to them or talking about the colors. And <laughs> disclaimer, especially if you, are, you have like toddlers, they don't always want to sit down. They believe they can read it themselves and everything, but don't stop. Just keep making that practice and culture of opening it up, you know, to just read the word of God with them, making them see the picture. Oh, this is Samuel. This is Jonah. See him. I know. Praise God. So, um, so another thing that I, for older kids, it would be good to get them Bible that Bibles as well. Bibles that they can have, like it's fun, has devotionals, and they have journals too. And just to demystify, um, just to say this as well, that it's important to also let them know that it's good to note what God is saying to them in their journal, not to make it so complicated. Whatever God is saying to them is what the word of God, the Bible is saying to them. So, you want to also say that to them so that they don't begin to feel like they need to hear um like a a majestic voice that say oh my son my child do this they begin to realize that whatever the word when you pray you are talking to god when you read the word of god god is talking back to you based on the word i, I don't know if you get what i'm trying to say to help our children and that's the way they will begin to grow in their hearing and that's how they also they will also not fall into error or mysticism things that you know feel um mystical praise god so it is very important that we you know uh, um address that so getting them their bibles and a journal just to write even if it's just one short line or it's a verse of the scripture it's powerful that they are writing this is what god said to me this morning i'm putting the date it will help them you know in their work um with god praise god please if we're still here please can we just god bless us thank you <laughs> okay um okay so let me just uh, move again another way we can also teach it to them is to sing songs that are scripture based to their ears just keep singing it don't stop singing it just keep singing it we sang in my house we sang him um, yes jesus loves me for maybe more than one year even two years before my daughter started singing it you know it took a very long time she now finally voiced it out one day. I'm like, wow, so this thing works. <laughs> so please don't stop. Just randomly just singing songs that are based on scripture. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will just give you like a set composed song. You compose, you dance, you know, to eat with them. It's registering something in their memory. Maybe one day they will remember the song as they grow up and they'll ask you, Mommy, what does this song mean? Or what that what does this song mean? And oh, so singing scripture based song to them. Um it's very powerful for babies as well. It's very powerful. Reading the word over babies is very, very powerful. Praise God. Um, okay. Um, I don't want to make this uh, very long as well. Okay. So I already mentioned that reading the word to babies as well, just reading the Bibles to babies, it's very, very powerful as well. Don't think still because they are babies, like reading it over them even while in the womb is very, very powerful. I I I I I did my best actually, but I remember that when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, one of the things I always did every day was almost every day. There were days I missed it because just I had stressed and everything. I know I would write words, um, scriptures, I would say scriptures over her. Then I will write it down in my journal as well. Like I had a specific book for her birth so that when she grows up, I'll show it to her. This was the things I said, the prophecies that went ahead of you and they give it to her too. Well, it was just my way of just looking at it and just saying the word of God is powerful. So I can't just say the word of God over my child. So it's very, very powerful. Don't feel like you're not doing anything because they are babies. I, I think I heard, I've even heard that babies, when you read scriptures to them, there's a way they move in the womb. So don't stop. It's very, very powerful. Praise God. Um, okay. Okay, so um, I think another thing I want to say is to echo what God has told you but about them every time. Echo it in their ears. Echo it to them. And so, and so many of us, God has given us scriptures about our children. If God has said, um, this is what they are going to be. This is what they are going to do. Even you know, many words of prophecy, echo it to their ears every time. You can even write it as a form of sticky notes and put it in their lunchbox. That's how powerful it is. It begins to remind them, even in the face of 
seemingly trying situations, they remember that this is what mommy always say that I am. This is what God says that I am. I remember that every morning, every time we go to school, one of the things that I say, you know, like I do, is to remember that there was a scripture that the Lord gave me when I was in the university. I, I, I wasn't even sure. I, I wasn't even in a relationship at the time, I think. But God gave me a particular word for my children. And every morning, although there are days that I actually miss, let me not say every morning, please. <laughs> that might seem like an exaggeration. So almost every morning, actually, I would, you know, just say it over, oh, this is what the word of God says about you. Because I'm enforcing, let I hear it, that this is God's, you know, this is a heritage in God, in God Almighty. You can put it as a form of sticky notes, you know, inside, in, in their, in their, in their lunchbox. Let them see it, you know, and then, you know, it, it's something that will, you know, bless their lives, praise the Lord. So keep echoing what God has told you about them every time. And take every teachable moment you can to share with them about Jesus. Sometimes they will ask you questions that are very weird at all. Be sure to recognize when it's a teachable moment that the Holy Spirit just wants you to, you know, take advantage of and redirect them to scripture. It aligns their mind to the word of God, the way it is every teachable moment please let's you know take that as praise god um okay this is like the most important part in everything you know that i have said today the most important thing is to ask the lord to give wisdom to communicate his word to our children because the truth of the matter is that children different children different strokes, to be honest. Every child is unique. And the way you will communicate God's word to one might be different from the way you will communicate to the other. What we need is God's wisdom. And I'll share a story that Lisa be there, you know, shared um, some time ago, I was listening to their family podcast. And then she said, why the, their children were growing up, um, their second child, once you say to him, um, once you say something like um, uh, angels, you say something about God. He's like, I don't believe that they're angels. You know, that there's nothing like that. I don't believe they're angels. And every time he's screaming, they're no angels and all and all like that. So there was this particular day that, you know, he was looking for something. And then she said she was in the bathroom and then she was just having that her own time, me time alone and everything. And then she was just shouting, mom, mom, I'm looking for this. I can't remember exactly what she said he was looking for. I'm looking for this. And then he began, to, she, she was about to respond to him when, the Holy Spirit said to her, Lisa, I want to speak to Austin. Like, I want to speak to him now. More like, move out of your way. I want to speak to him now. I know. So she was, you know, being, if, if I, I think this happens to mothers a lot. There's this overprotective kind of spirit. You just want to help them to do everything, over caring, just want to do everything. I know. So she said, okay, check this place, check this place. And then she was mentioning different places. And then he would check, he would not find it. He would check again, he would not find it. Then after some time, she just gave up and everything. Then he began to look for it. And then he just screamed all of a sudden, Mom, Mom, God just spoke to me. Like he just spoke to me. And then she just realized how much as parents you must leave space for the Holy Ghost. Don't be too much of, in quotes, a gum body that you do not allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. Realize your jurisdiction. Know your jurisdiction. Know when it should just. Let me take a pause here. God wants to do something. No one, the Holy Spirit is saying, okay, now you've tried enough in your own wisdom. Allow me to take it up from this place. Praise God. I, I don't know if you have overfallen, but we must, we must understand that the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom on how to communicate with our children. What if that day they just kept on looking for it everywhere else and they just kept on looking for it and then she said, don't worry, I'll get you another one would have missed the chance to have an encounter with God. And that's why I emphasize that, uh, you know, sometimes in the middle that praying for encounters for your children is so powerful. You don't know. The window might be open anytime, you know, just for the Holy Spirit to just move. But just make sure that you're already sowing seeds of prayers that, you know, would help, you know, as they help them as they grow, as they grow in God. It's okay. Um, I think that I want to take questions first before I go to some maybe like frequently asked questions that I think I got before um, this um, meeting. So praise God. Hi, everyone. Any question anyone willing to share? 
anybody or maybe contributions please <laughs> thank you anyone maybe contributions yeah i have one uh, contribution if i can yes please yeah well you said something about uh, uh about the songs and of course we know you from the songs but i know yeah. from my own life uh that um my mother she she um was leading the children church when i was young and okay. uh, so she was always preparing a lot of things with songs and she was playing uh, on cassettes. We still had cassettes then, not <laughs> and later on CDs. Wow. And she was always preparing uh, before we went to church and during the week she was playing it. And I learned a lot of songs that we repeatedly heard. And even now, I'm in my 40s, um, often in difficult situations, these are the songs that pop, to, pop up to my mind and these are uh -huh. the songs that I sing. So it, it is so powerful that even decades later, the songs that you learned in your childhood mm. that gave you stability can still yeah. lead you later on in life. And I think that is really powerful. Mm. Thank you so much. As in, it's so powerful. And I really can relate to what you shared because even as an adult too, it happens to me. Songs that you've you've heard maybe, uh, maybe two weeks, three weeks, more, and even years ago, the Holy Spirit just brings it up in your spirit. And then it strengthens you sometimes, if it's strength that you need, or if you just need to just rejoice and everything, there's just a way that it just comes back to your spirit. So please, please endear, well, okay, this, I'm, maybe I'm doing free PR for myself, but that's what, <laughs> not myself, but for the Lord's work. <laughs> so if you, I, I probably will just link um, um, the YouTube channel where we have songs, we're still building the library, but there are quite a number of songs that your children can enjoy. And God is helping us evolve as well to, you know, in animations in good time by the grace of God. So songs are very, very powerful. Thank you so much, Justin, for that. Um, anyone wants to share maybe a contribution or question? Maybe something is bothering your mind as you got parenting and all. I think that one of the things that is so powerful in any journey in life is to have a community that you can speak your mind you know to and then trust god that answers will come as you speak um out anybody anyone okay thank you so much all right so i'll just go over what we have the points that we've shared today and like the first thing we said was to do it was to do it don't just say it in good and bad times if you want your children to have a vibrant spiritual growth, um, um, growing or growth, <laughs> you know, you want to do it, and then don't doing it as an um, sorry, doing it as in being a mom and dad or dad that seeks the Lord. Also doing it by also having family altars, you know, going to church together as a family, making sure you yourself are serving in the vineyard of God. They see it as well. Um, also, um, another way, um, we said, um, teaching the next one was to say, you should teach it. Don't say because you do it, you shouldn't teach it. And our anchor text was from Acts chapter one, verse one. So that is a place for doing and place for teaching, taking a cue from the life of Jesus, of, of Jesus Christ. And, um, in teaching it, we said that, um, it is, um, it is vital that we should teach our children to do it. And then, you know, getting them an age appropriate Bible, singing song, scripture based songs to them are very, very powerful. That's how we teach them, you know, the word of God. That's how we teach them the value of prayer. That's how we teach them fasting. That's how we teach them obedience to the word. That's how we teach them faith. Praise God. And then the most important one was that we said, leave space for the Holy Spirit to do his work. Know when you have reached your, this is my way I should stop and allow God to do it. It's called be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse one, praise God. All right, oh no, Psalm 46 verse 10, sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll just take some from some questions that I have right, um, right here. Mm. So one of the questions I have here is that how do we engage our children, especially when they feel bored and then I think that, that it happens a lot to children. So sometimes they are just very bored and or 
with maybe your routines or, or things and all. The first thing that you want to do as a parent is to have a conversation with them. Ever been there as a parent to when you didn't have that gish gish in your work with God, you want to let them know in honest truth that sometimes you might not feel it, you might feel bored, but this is why you should keep going to the presence of God. This is why you should still read your Bible. It's for your growth. In simple terms, just say teaching them that you know you I know you feel bored, but you want to grow now. If you eat, you will grow. If you read your Bible too, you will grow. If you pray too, you will grow. You will become better. Just explaining it to them in very, you know, um, simple um, terms. And you might also want to do this, switch up the routine. Sometimes switch up the routine. I find that also in my work with God, that sometimes when I feel bored, I take the first thing I do last and do last, last and do first. So switch it up and everything or go spontaneous. Sometimes it happens to us as human beings. So just try to help them switch it up. But say maybe today, we're going to start with dancing. We're going to dance. Instead of singing worship songs, we're going to dance. Dance, maybe we we'll dance for like 10 minutes or you dance for like 15 minutes. Then we'll not come back. We'll not relax and read, read our Bible and pray. Just switch up with things for them if they feel bored. Praise God. Um, please let me know if that makes some scripture sense. <laughs> um, okay. I think the other thing is um, how how we should when we can manage, you know, um, times when we are busy as parents. And I, I I feel like life. One of the things I came to terms with terms with is that life will. My current busy in next few years, I'll be way busier than this. I must just find a way to just inculcate everything consistently into everything the everyday life and all so if you feel like you're so busy and how can i engage my child with this busyness of life and all one of the things that you can do is to first trust god for grace i mean but you know before i would you can't be tired too sometimes so just trust god for grace and say god this is the point i am i feel like i am busy or maybe i've not learned to make appropriate use of my time or manage my time well teach me what to do teach me what to prioritize teach me to major on the minor no ma major on the major and not minor on the major i hope we get that <laughs> so to major on the major so we're going we, we first ask god you know for you know this wisdom and i feel like god gives wisdom for every season that you find yourself like so there's no one size fits as a busy dad or a busy mom on how to engage your children if you are too busy sometimes you might just be reading a scripture over them before they sleep i think that there was a particular season of my life and the holy spirit said every night read a scripture to joan before she sleeps so depending on the seasons of our life sometimes be open to whatever the holy spirit will help you will want to do through you to your children. I don't know if that makes well, much of scripture sense, but well, that's what I we have for today. I want to say thank you to everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> this felt more like a presentation to me. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's a question here. Thank you so much, sir. Um, okay, well, thank you. He said, is there a way to guide our children against general pop culture and not look old school? Or out of vogue or weird. Hey, this question is still new. Good evening. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the session so far. Thank and you, sir. Really insightful. So um I just want to give a bit of context okay, to that sir. question that I asked. Probably can help you in trying to respond to it. Um, okay, sir. I, I remember, you know, different instances as a very young boy you know, secondary school, even university, right? Mm. I, I, I noticed that there, I mean, it, there were some of my colleagues or mates, right? That whenever they see, whenever they, 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 there's a way they categorize elderly people, you know, that are trying to advise mm -hmm. them, you know, or trying to tell them to or just even their parents many times. Mm. Right, old that's oh, maybe yeah, yeah, for example, old school, these guys they don't really know what's happening, 
and there's this thing there's this power of ubiquity when you see everybody doing something around you it just feels right sometimes mm -hmm. right so I, I was just thinking around that that is there a way especially when it seems like everybody around them there's a general pop culture this is what everybody does and it is mm -hmm. not it, it might not be exactly um, the don't sin don't sin but you know that mm -hmm. these parts you know just like the, the, the way the bible puts it you know that there, there's a way that seems right right, right so. but the end is destruction, destruction. so is there I, I don't know do you want to respond to that thank you okay thank you so much sir i i i feel like that question is very powerful because especially because of the age and time that we are in these are the things that we really need to be talking about because we cannot lie we cannot deceive ourselves rather these things are, are out there and everything just aimed at our children so i think the first thing i would say is that we are not in a generation the generation of children coming up they are not children that you can say to don't do this without giving explanation to it they first of all ask you why because you are who <laughs> and everything they always want an explanation for everything and this brings me to a very very important point the first thing I would say before saying that which is important, both are equally important, is that first ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom. And this is not cliche because we have not walked this parenting journey at all. Like, even if we have walked it, we need God's grace daily. Asking the Lord for wisdom can, can be the game changer, can, can, um, can bring less tension into, you know, uh, a possible conversation or that kind of scenario. The next thing I think that, and I feel that is very powerful, is to have conversations. And when I mean conversations, it's not conversations like, don't do it because this will happen. You will need to paint the scenario very well to them. For example, a child that is, you know, I think I saw a video of a girl that came in and walked up to her parents and said that now she feels she's 18, she wants to go have sex and, I was like, I'm thankful that it's good that at least she even came to come and say it to them in the house. What if she just kept it and then, you know, just was just doing it and they were just saying, ah, she was a sacred girl, but, you know, she was just doing so stuff. So when they come to, and then maybe they say, sex is like the major thing that, you know, happens, sex, you know, drugs and all. And then, you know, they just want that kind of, you know, pop culture and everything. We want to explain to them normally, safe, without, you know, I'm not even saying let's leave Bible aside, but logically, somebody can, you know, have maybe like a transference of STD or whatever, any form of disease. You want to tell them the danger of this, whatever can happen. Aside from the fact of that, the most important thing is that they would be doing something that the, that God does not want. And these things, um, they come from the point of how much you have allow the holy spirit to use to use you to build the fear of god in the heart of your children such that they fear god that just hearing that god not like afraid of god but there's this holy reverence for god and it also starts from also our lives as parents how much do we revere god does it show in our character for example if you're working you're driving in lagos traffic and then this uh, molue no there's no molue in lagos like that again um downfall just comes and just Swerve tries to swerve into your front, and they say, I'll real or die, or you say something. It begins to paint to them that you don't have the fear of God. So, if you have modeled fear of God to them, by the time you begin to say, For the fact that you love God, you shouldn't do this. This is what is going to happen. These are the consequences. Allow them to speak also. Tell them, ask them to tell you what they are feeling in their mind about it. How do they feel about it? Is it that they feel left out? Is it that they feel like if 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 they don't do this, that everything is all gone, they will not be able to join the latest group in their class? Paint all of the scenarios to them. Have that extensive conversation with them. And I think that I want to say, parents, that this is not again. This is not the age and time where you try to cover things up. You might need to see it as it is. You know, with, by the help of the Holy Spirit, the way it is, so that they can realize the dangers of um, getting into this. I don't know if this, you know, answers your question, sir. So the first thing is to just see you to the Holy Spirit, ask him what to do, <laughs> and then have a conversation around it. Yes, yes, it does. It was really helpful. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, is there any other question? Anybody, anyone? Anyone? Okay. Everybody is quiet. So, okay. Sir Victor, welcome, sir. Good to have you here, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Your hands are raised, sir. Okay, maybe this is net. Okay. okay. That was a mistake, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, sir. Oh, I, your, your hands are raised. I thought you wanted to ask a question. Okay. Okay, Sister Dawn, please go ahead, Ma. Okay, good evening. Um, Ma. I don't, <laughs> good evening. Sorry, I don't know if this is, is this, sorry, is this a question and answer session? Or is yeah, it a question and answer or contribution, anyone? Okay, okay. So, me, I actually want to ask a question. Um, okay. What's your, I know you were single at a point, then you were engaged at a point, and then you got married, and, then, and now you are a parent. So, for people that are single that are on this call, let me speak for myself what's your advice in terms of preparing to be a parent right what's your advice for people that are single apart from prayer you know i know the whole pray for your children and all. so what's your advice for people that are single in preparation for um, being a parent because I, I would give the reason why i ask this question okay i i don't like to go into anything without preparing for it you know yeah. while i was in while i was on campus while i was in school i like to prepare for the semester like the next semester during the previous semester <laughs> i just don't like to so good <laughs> i don't like like i don't like to get into somewhere and then i'm wondering oh, what's going on here what are we doing you know oh. so yeah so that's my that's the reason why i'm asking the question of course not like i'm not i'm saying that i must have my life all together yeah but yeah. There's, there's a level of preparedness that you should put into things that are yeah. important yeah thank you okay. <laughs> See, I already leave you. You wait, you wait, Factoria. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. I think that's like a beautiful question. I, I must say that when I began to see that single people registered for this, I was inspired. Though, eh? I was really, really inspired that I, that people really want to do it right with parenting. So I think that one of the things that I would say, thank God, you already mentioned prayer, but I would say that. Is important that while you pray, pray for. Let me give you another prayer point that you should pray, especially on the journey of parenting. Pray that you and your spouse are united. It's a very powerful thing because whatever happens between you and your spouse can affect the ground. You know, the segment two elephants are fighting is the ground that will suffer. While you are praying, had the prayer that God keep my spouse and I united i think i feel like that's the bedrock for anything if anybody if people and i'm, I'm not against books i in fact i'm currently on a particular book by gary gary is it gary gary i can't remember it's not gary chapman but it's, it's gary something something sacred parenting i'm currently on that book reading and it's a very powerful book i'm not against reading books but if books reading books and attending all of the meetings will be in vain if you and your spouse are not united and this is not to say that there are people who don't have marriages where maybe um the other spouse is of a different state or maybe it seems like everything is not going well at the time of course there's wisdom for that but i feel like the most important thing you want to really if do is to set that foundation and say god keep my spouse and i united on this page of parenting you know we've had situations where i, I can even speak for myself actually my husband is correcting my daughter about something. I know that it's wrong, but because I am quarreling with him at that moment, I'm giving him side eye, like, why did you beat her? Those are, and those are like loopholes, like the devil uses. And that problem should have been corrected at that point. But because I'm giving side eye, it could be an issue. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. So the first thing I feel like every, every single or something, single searching, single not searching, comp uh, you know, there's no complicated here. I don't think there are complicated people here, no? you know 
should do is to just ask God, God keep us united on this front to be able to raise godly children. And the other thing I would like to say, which I've mentioned before, is that read books, read books, trusted books, actually. <laughs> Attend seminars if you can attend. Take all of the training and learning. It's not you don't you don't over prepare for such a journey. Actually, they are, well both marriage and and parenting. So those are like the two things that I think that you know I can say with that prayer of unity, pray more, and then um, reading books, attending seminars, and all. Okay, and just realizing actually again that parenting is a journey. You feel you know it, you've hit it at it sometimes. At some other point, you're just like, do I even really know this thing? <laughs> just realizing that it's a journey. Praise God. <laughs> Sister Dawn, did I answer your question well? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. <laughs> satisfied or maybe yes, yes. No, no, I'm oh. very satisfied. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. Any other question? Anybody? Okay, so I'm just going to take our fun theme song. I promised us that there's going to be a fun theme song that we can teach our, um, our children. Okay, so it's this simple. So we're going to be using the analogy of our food and our drink. I don't have food here <laughs> and drink. I actually wanted to bring food and drink, but and then I was thinking about it. And I said, I hope people not be looking at me like this lady likes food. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's okay. So, but just imagine there's an imaginary food and drink. So it's a simple. I eat my food to grow. I take my drinks to grow. Sorry, sorry, I've missed it. I've missed it. Okay. I eat God's word to grow. I pray always to grow, just as I eat my food and take my drink to grow. I eat God's word to grow, just as I eat my food and take my drink to grow. I drink water, drink the word to grow. <laughs> Let me take it again. I eat God's word to grow. I pray always to grow, just as I eat my food and take my drinks to grow. I eat God's word to grow. It's that simple. So we're saying I eat God's word to grow. I pray always to grow, just as I eat my food. So you can take their food and say, you know, when you eat food, you were not, you were, you were taller, you were, sh you were short in two thousand and whatever. Now you have grown taller. And where did you grow taller? It's because you were eating well. Mommy was feeding you and daddy was feeding you very well. That's why you grew. So that's the same way you're also to do with, um, you're, also to, you're supposed to do it with prayer. Eat the word. Eat God's word. Stay in the word and pray always for your growth. So you tell them, eat the word, pray. These are the signs to grow this is for growth so i'll take it i don't know if you can take it together if you don't mind but i i, I the mistake i made was i would have changed the lyrics <laughs> you know here but if you can give me time i can quickly you know pin it here let me just pin the lyrics so that we can all sing it together i eat that word to grow Always to grow, just like I eat my food and take my things to grow. Okay, I think we can just. Make do with that. Can we sing it together, please? Let me crave your indulgence. It'll be so sweet. Network might drag anyone, but I think that's so beautiful singing it together. Okay. So only one person that is unmuted. Please let's unmute our mics. I like to hear our beautiful voice. Okay, so let's go. One, two, we'll go. 
Let's take it one more time. Let's take it again. I I what a symphony. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you. you so much, everyone. Um, thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. Okay. So, um, before we just round up, I I would be doing um something very wrong. I don't know who this is for, but go give me a word for somebody. I don't know. It doesn't be watching online later, but I needed to just put it down here. And then um, one of the things the Lord said to me that if you feel like your children are far gone, maybe you didn't, in quote, you feel like you didn't do your homework when you were much younger. Um, God says, I restore and I redeem time. Um, one of the things he said is to just come in mercy, just speaking mercy over your children because he's the one that restores and redeems time. Don't feel like it's um, it's all over and nothing good can come out you know, from them. God restores and redeems time. So thank you, everyone. I want us to just take a moment to just um, pray. And um, I don't know if you're like me, I feel like, Parenting is enormous. I, like I say, it almost every time it's a lot. But I I believe strongly that while it's a lot, God's grace is available. God entrusted us with um, our children. He didn't feel like, oh, you're going to fail a lot at it. He felt like I put everything in you for it. And he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. So, Father Lord, this very evening, we just want to come to you as parents and parents to be just asking you for grace for this journey of parenting to raise our children in your way. We're asking there, God Almighty, that you will help us to be united with our spouse. Help that our own front is at peace and there is unity to be able to raise children after your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus on this journey, whenever we feel guilty or we feel down, let there be encouragement in our spirit, man. Help us to see you. Help us to see the fact that while we parent, you're also parenting us to become better in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God Almighty. And we thank you for this moment. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you will brood on everything that we have learned in this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. They will not fall by the roadside. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. And we look forward to doing this if you bid us to do it again. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. So good having this. I feel really refreshed. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ma. Uh, God bless. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for joining in. God bless us real good in Jesus' name. Till we come again your way next month, hopefully. <laughs> God help you. Thank you so much. All right. It's hard to say goodbye, but bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Ma. Bye, Ma. <laughs> Thank you bye. so much. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Lord.